The purpose of this test is to evaluate the low light performance of the C500 Mark II when paired with the 200mm f1.8. And of course, to check out all that bokeh. These are nearly at close focus, probably about three or four meters away. By chance, we spotted the International Space Station flying overhead. Astrophotography is, of course, one of the ideal applications of this lens. In this light, the camera can't quite autofocus on faces, but it is still handy in a pinch. Notice the branches on this tree aren't quite pin sharp, but if I hit the AF switch, it snaps into focus. I just love the way foliage looks through bokeh. Just a couple of landscape shots, all wide open. Other than a slight fringing on some of the street lights, it's virtually aberration free. It's sharp corner to corner, and crucially for astrophotography, there's no coma in the corners. So we weren't the only people out looking at the skies this particular evening. Notice how they're all on different planes. The depth of field is shallow enough that I can only focus on one of them at once, even at this distance. That's Jupiter, and just visible are three of its moons. And that on the left is Saturn. Again, notice how thin the depth of field is. The camera is in focus, but the man and his laptop are slightly out. Notice the little satellite going across the sky. With this lens, you can see things that you simply can't with your own eyes, and typically can only see using long exposures. To give you an idea of the field of view, a full frame, 200 millimeters into the night sky. This is the plow or the Big Dipper. So you can just see I'm tracing its handle here. That's the fourth point of its handle. Go down into the pan, across, and back up. And here it is. This is our first look of what we've been waiting out in the cold for. This is the Neowise Comet. At this point, I've opened up to a 360 degree shutter just to get an extra stop of exposure. You can just about tell with the motion blur. The comet is barely visible to the eye. You really need binoculars to see it. All of the incredible photos you've probably seen of it are done with long exposures. All these other stargazers made for some fantastic subjects to test this lens with. So up until this point, everything has been in full frame in C-Log2 with a standard 709 LUT. But I want to see how it looks in Super 16 just to see how far we can punch in, but also to evaluate the noise using different picture profiles. This is Jupiter again, and you can more clearly make out its moons using this crop mode. And here's Saturn again. But to demonstrate the advantages of a lens this long and fast, this is stopped down to 2.8. And we'll open back up to 2 and 1.8, just to show that that extra third of a stop really does make a visible difference. Okay, so we said we'll check out some different picture profiles, and this will be most evident looking at the 2K crop. And this is the standard 709 in-camera picture profile. And this is a custom low light picture profile for even more suppressed noise. And just for a giggle, this is what RAW looks like. It just goes to show how efficient the in-camera profiles are, but also how much information the sensor is able to capture. This shot here is almost close to focus.
and let's take one last look at NeoWise before we head home. This is full frame with the 709 picture profile. And here it is again with my low light profile.